I'll tell you a little bit more about. I'm Jordan Miller, President and Creative Director of Miller Volpe. And we, and we're an agency that's been open since uh, 2001, I'd say, um, 12 years now. And we come, we're a bunch of, uh, small group of people come out of big agencies in New York and Philadelphia and um, Princeton, and we now have a shop in Bucks County, kind of halfway between New York and Philadelphia, which are our big markets. And we all come from big brand experience over the years, and now we're applying those principles to uh, local, regional, and national brands um, now. Uh, and you'll recognize some, some of the work we've done around here. And, but I wanted to talk to you about branding in general and how important it is when you're considering getting into a new business. It's something that people um, don't always remember to think about. And so you can actually add a lot of value to your brand, as you'll see. And we're going to talk to, talk to you about that today. So you have this great idea for a startup. And this is your idea. And to the rest of the world, that's all it is. What is it? Until you tell me what it is, or excite me about it, or intrigue me to use it, I have no idea what it is. So how is it going to be perceived by your audience? A sneaker, Nike, boy, they were pretty brilliant. There's a lot of sneakers out there. How the heck did they do what they did? Well, it's all about branding, marketing, uh, meeting the perceptions and aspirations of your audience, and taking it forward. So that's, that's, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So the brand is made up of a lot of different influences. Um, it has, you, you, have, you can talk about its benefits, and, and you can develop a brand through lots of fancy market research, and you can, you can measure perceptions, and you can do advertising. But at the core of all of it is the brand itself. And we want to talk about how do you actually create one of these things and make that box really beautiful and really cool and something that people will want to buy. Now, if you look up the definition of brand in the American Marketing Association, which is um, one of the premier organizations in our business, defines it as follows. A brand is a name, term, sign, symbol, or design, or a combination of them, intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or a group of sellers, and to differentiate them from those of other sellers. Sounds like a, dic a, a dictionary definition. Well, I say this. A brand is actually a lot more than that. It's really, that was so boring. So brand is all about perception and emotion and the story and image and the personality and an expectation. It's much more about that. It's actually very hard to define. And a lot of people say a brand is intangible. It's just a feeling. Uh, like I said, Nike, you get a feeling when you wear that shoe versus something else or you get a different feeling in a BMW from a Mercedes, or you get a different feeling from Starbucks coffee versus something else. It is all about your reaction to it. And so we're trying to create a brand and have your audience receive it, you hope, as you intend them to receive it. But that's not always the case. We'll talk a little bit about that. But at least create something that people want beyond just the product itself. But it's the feeling that comes around it. So a good brand, it delivers a clear and unique message. And one thing I did like in the definition was the word differentiate. That's probably the most important thing, um, beside from being clear. But boy, especially when you've got shoes or cars or anything, there's so many things that are similar about them that you really have to work hard to differentiate. Televisions, computers, there's all kinds. You have to do a lot of work to be, to be special and different. Um, an example of this. Uh, who can tell me um, what car company uh, claims the position of safety? Anyone know? Volvo. Volvo, it was really interesting. Volvo said, okay, we have a car with four wheels and so many seats and an engine and air conditioning, but wow, we put a lot of extra stuff into the frame and we put a lot of extra airbags into it. You know what? No one else has taken this thing called safety as their primary positioning. Let's grab it before anyone else does. A lot of other car companies could have done that, but Volvo decided to grab it, and soccer moms bought them up by the millions. They wanted the safest car they could drive for their kids around into school and into soccer in the afternoon. That's what Volvo was all about. And so they did an excellent job of doing that. 
There's another company that did a similar thing that sells tires. Anyone know who the safe tires are? Michelin. They put babies sitting in tires. Talk about a commodity project product. It's it's rubber. And they decided to put a baby in it, and all of a sudden, moms and dads gotta have that, those kind of tires, so no one gets hurt in their car. So it's a fascinating thing, Brandy. It's very, very powerful. Um, credibility and loyalty is really, really important in branding. One of, the, one of the tenets we always say to our clients is, make sure you are honest in what you tell people and expect from people. If you are dishonest about your brand, it will ruin you faster than anything. It's very hard to make up for, for, uh, for bait and switch in marketing. So be honest. If you're not the greatest, it's OK. Tell them what you are good at. Uh, it, but if you, are, if you are not true, you will lose your brand power immediately. American Express is all about loyalty and credibility. I've been a member since 1987. Um, they make me feel special because I'm a member. I don't just hold their card. But they treat me really well. Every time, my wife got a call last night. Someone in China was trying to buy something on the internet with her card number. We got a call within minutes. It was resolved within minutes. We'll get a new card tomorrow. They are on top of it. They're all about loyalty. They're all about service. They'll waive fees. They'll not charge you if you say you didn't buy it or it broke. They're all about trust, and they totally deliver on it. And that's how they've done so well over the years. Aspiration. You want to. A brand is supposed to motivate and connect to you emotionally, no matter what it is. Um, well, the most famous aspirational brand really is the one that makes you want to go run marathons on weekends. That's Nike. Nike did a better job of this than anyone. Everyone wants Nike clothing, Nike watches, Nike shoes, because it makes them feel either healthier or cooler or more fit than they really are. And that's what Nike's all about. Um, they, they've owned that market. And they came after Puma, they came after Adidas, they came after Converse, and look what they did, they just ran right over them by associating themselves with cool athletes like John McEnroe in the beginning and then Michael Jordan and LeBron James now. They're just eating it up. So they're, that, that's, what, that's what a brand really is. It's very intangible, but it's very powerful. So from a business point of view, why are brands so important? Well, of course, from a business point of view, do you sell more products? But it's really about creating value. There is um, a term that's really interesting called brand contribution. I don't know if you're familiar with it. But it's the portion of a brand value driven by the brand itself rather than the financial or other factors. Brand contribution measures a brand's ability to stand out against, a stand out and generate desire and loyalty in the mind of the consumer. An example of this is Coke. Coca-Cola, if you take just all its factories, all its bottles, all the liquid that it produces, and all of its overhead, it's a, worth about half of the market cap, and the other half is just pure brand value. That's how powerful it is. It's something like, uh, you know, 40, or $45 billion of, of the value of Coca-Cola is its name and its colors. Do you have a question? Is it, from an accounting point of view, when those kinds of companies are bought out, is that what is considered the goodwill portion? The, you know, the I don't business? know about the term goodwill in that respect. Right. But I do know that you know, if I were to go out and buy a soda company, I'd have to pay a lot more to buy Coca-Cola than something else. Okay. It's all because that brand equity is so, so secure that it actually, in their case, doubles their value. In Apple's case, they estimate that Apple's brand value, because they're a much more expensive product to make and, and there's a lot more moving parts, maybe 25% of their brand value, 25% uh, of their market cap is brand value. It's still a lot because they're, what, 500 billion? So you get 100 billion of that is brand value. That's pretty significant. But so you can see once you've made a good stride to the brand, it completely pumps up your value. Yeah. It, it'll probably fall into what they call intangible assets. So yeah. when you do an acquisition, you have a tangible and tangible asset category. And I think you can put that in. Yeah, I've heard it as good, goodwill, which is above and beyond the actual value of the company. It's more of the branding. 
Right. So, so they can actually calculate the brand value, just like Apple and just like Coke do. They actually have a, a monetary valuation that you can do on third party, which would go in the intangible. It's pretty Anything complicated. <laughs> would find up wind up as good well. Okay. Fairly yeah. complicated to calculate. Um, there are some good sources for that, though. You can look on interbrand.com. It's fascinating. They do a lot of that stuff. Or uh, uh, Millard Brown is another one who, who they calculate brand values. Those are really good resources. But um, so you can see that now brand isn't just a feel good thing, it's actually money in the bank if it's done well. Naraj told me that you all are particularly interested, I think, in digital and technology brands. I believe that's something to do with the, the, the course you're taking. So I just wanted to pull out a couple of uh, uh, numbers here about tech brands in particular. When you look at the top 100 brands in the, in the globe, um, by brand value, 28 out of the top 100 are, are tech and telecom, which is by far the highest single category in terms of value. Um, this is made up of, it could be food and beverage, housing, uh, a million other things, uh, product, goods and products and services. But tech is extremely strong. And the average tech brand value is around 44 billion uh, versus all the others average around half that, 21 billion. So technology is a strong brand area. I'm talking about, of course, Apple, Samsung, IBM, all these you know, big brands that are in tech, uh, you know, Oracle, those types of people. But their brand values are very, very high. I wanted to talk to you about um, some basic steps to, to building a brand. And this is something you, we usually take several months to do. Um, typically, and we're going to do in 10 minutes here. Um, and it's just core brand is pretty much the same every time. So there is a method to it. The first thing you have to do is know where you stand vis-a-vis -vis your competition, uh, market uh, opportunities, and everything else. So if I were coming up with a technology brand, I have to think about what part of the sandbox I want to play in. Do I want to be the fast technology, or the mobile technology, or the big technology, or the niche technology? I have to think real hard about where I'm going to fit in, and then I want to find a place where I have a chance to win. There's a lot of players out there, especially in technology and digital world. So you want to be really, really aware of, of what your competition's doing, where the market trends are going, and where your product or service can fit into uh, the, the future as best as possible. This, this market research can take a considerable amount of time and investment itself. Sometimes we do the market research ourselves. Sometimes it's really broad and we need to hire third party pe people who just do market research. Other times when budgets are limited, we have to use our gut and the gut of our client and we we hash it out as much as we can on the, and throw it on the table and say, this is the way we're going to go. It can take a great range, but to do it well, you've got to be really smart about how you want to position yourself. This is an interesting example. A brief aside is um, about being opportunistic. Grab your position if no one else has taken it. Volvo was an example of that. A lot of people could have said they were the safe car before Volvo said it, but no one said it. And they, it, it rung true, and, and their sales took off like crazy. UPS was doing overnight delivery for many, many years before FedEx came along. And FedEx said, you know what? I think a lot of people want stuff overnight. And no one else is saying it. So they started saying it. And UPS said, well, we do that. It said, too late. This is us. And then they took it over, and it went like crazy. They are now the Kleenex uh, of overnight. Now, sure, there's lots of other people who do it. But they really are the ones who owned the overnight. They grabbed it because no one else did. Really important to, to keep an eye out for the opportunities. So once you know where you have to stand and, and, and where your best chance to win is, then you have to talk about, OK, what am I? How am I really going to find the core of what I'm all about and, and express that in a way that's going to make a difference and that people will understand? So we want to define your brand at the core. And this is a pretty simple um, diagram, but it's a really important process. And we're going to do this later in the class. It is called a brand essence map, they call it. And on the outside rings, you put your brand features. 
then you put your brand benefits on the inside, and then what is your brand essence? And not, and and that's very hard to declare. Sometimes it can take a lot of debate and a lot of time, but if you really want your essence to be as singularly focused as possible and unique as possible, if you can make it that way. Um, so if Volvo were to do this, and they would say, I got four wheels, and I got an engine, and I got a frame, and I got all this stuff, and then my benefits are that it's comfortable and it's and it's roomy and all this other stuff and it's got airbags and um, it's got Michelin tires. I want my core to be safety and no one else has gotten it and I believe because of my market research that people are screaming for a safe car. So I grab it and I, I market it like crazy and that's how they took off. Um, an example here uh, that you all are probably familiar with is uh, live your mission and put yourself inside your customer's head. Basically, every customer, OEM customer who makes a computer or something, uh, some kind of technology along those lines or mobile uh, devices, wants the fastest processor and got the most stable, the coolest, the smallest, whatever it is. Intel wants to own that and continue to own that. So they say Intel inside. Their position is they want to be inside everything and, and you can't make a device without putting us inside your device because you know, you might be using the wrong processor. Whether that's true or not, they want to own that. So they start with, okay, what are we? We're semiconductors and processors and servers and chips and PCs and for PCs. And we want to be smaller, cheaper, faster. But we want to be the core technology in everything. And we want to own it. And we want to be inside everything. So they literally carved out a physical space for themselves, not just saying it. They literally say, don't make a device without saving room for us. So that's a pretty strong position. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you rationalize the need to have you know a really strong core when you stick to, with the need to be nimble and agile and be able to pivot based on market conditions or you know change. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pick away to begin with. Now Apple, that's a good question. Apple started with something very different in the '70s and '80s. Um, they just were purely about computers. They wanted to be a faster computer and something different from PCs. They simply did. And then over time, they started. They changed their, their, their core and their brand position. One thing you don't want to do, though, is you want to try not to reverse or negate what you've done in the past. You want to build on it. So over the years, Apple went from, um, I think, take a bite out of a Mac, I think it was, or something like that. They, they, they just wanted it to be different. Then they went to that Think Different campaign, which was really, really a, a, a groundbreaking campaign for them because they literally just wanted to be associated with being different people. Now their tagline is really interesting. It's just built by Apple in Cupertino, California. They are so big now that they themselves, their brand equity is, if, if you're not an Apple, you're not an Apple. And it's enough to say, we are what we are, and it's it's a fascinating transition they've made. They've already made the difference. They've already become, they've already gotten people to think different and change. Now it's just about maintaining that an Apple is strong enough that it's better and different from everyone else. Samsung's challenging them now. Samsung's actually trying to beat them at the game at their own game and actually trying to make better products. So they're going to have to be nimble to your point to be able to go to the next chapter, whatever that is. Any other questions? Okay, so you've created a place um, where you want to play in your sandbox. You have figured out what your core is. And when you describe your product, you have to craft your message very carefully. Um, there are three basic steps we take to that. And it's, it's, it's kind of a distillation process. We create an elevator speech. Maybe it's a paragraph long, a few sentences long, that my product does X, Y, and Z. It does all these things, and it's, it's going to save the world, and it's the best thing since sliced bread. OK, great. I get it. But if then you distill it down to uh, a descriptive sentence, maybe just one sentence that just tells what, you, what your proposition is and your difference is. And then typically, in a slogan or tagline, is this thing that creatively wraps it all up in just a few words. An example of that, to our point earlier, is Apple. If you look at their mission, um, and that's kind of what I'm talking about, 
It's a long form of saying what they're doing. Apple is committed to bringing the best personal computing experience to students, educators, creative professionals, and consumers around the world through its innovative hardware, software, and internet offerings. Okay, that's a pretty big mouthful. Then, how can we say it even more efficiently? Apple's leading change in computers, phones, music, and TV, and who knows what's next. And then I'm going to go to their older, more interesting slogan just from a few years back, think different. That's what they're all about. They really wanted to change everything, and they have. They've really succeeded in it. They kept this mantra up forever. And literally, the music industry has completely changed. The computer industry has changed. Um, the mobile industry has changed because of them. The TV industry is about to change more because of them. Now they're getting into radio. They're, they're messing with every major form of communication and entertainment we, we use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all about change. So once you kind of have your message together, step four is creating a brand identity, and this is where some of the more creative stuff comes in that we do all the time. I wish we had done these. Um, create a brand identity, which is usually in the form of a logo, but it's also the brand style and tone and attitude of a brand. But these are some pretty um, well-known brands that you know. And people took a lot of time to create these.